My mission today is to save you hours, perhaps days, even weeks per year of productivity by doing just one thing. What's that thing? Stick around and I'll show you today on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here, how the heck you doing this fine day? At Dotto Tech, we make technology easy so you can do more. Now today, I'm going to talk to you about Gmail shortcuts, using keyboard shortcuts to save time and increase your efficiency. Now, this process works regardless of which email application you use and regardless of actually which tool you're using, even outside of email. But if you learn to use the keyboard shortcuts for the tools that you use most often, you can save yourself hours, even days per year of productivity. Now I'm gonna walk you quickly through how it works in Gmail, then I'm gonna show you just how many hours you can save. I've got a calculator I'm gonna show you, and then I'm gonna finally wrap things up today by talking to you about how you can develop these skills, the easiest way to learn to do all of the shortcuts. So let's dive in first and talk about Gmail. Now, if you want to use keyboard shortcuts in Gmail, before you begin, you have to do one thing. You have to go into your Gmail account, go under the settings menu, and you have to enable keyboard shortcuts. You scroll down within your settings through all of the different settings until you find, where's my enable, there it is, keyboard shortcuts. It's turned off on my demo account here. You have to turn your keyboard shortcuts on and then as is always the case within Gmail, you have to go to the very bottom and save changes. If you don't save changes, it doesn't work and you won't believe how often people get frustrated because they think they've done something in Gmail and they haven't saved the changes so the changes weren't saved and it wasn't done and they're frustrated. Once you've enabled the keyboard shortcuts, instead of having to go to the different menus and e constantly reaching for your mouse to click to do everything, you can now stay on the keyboard. And this is where you save a lot of time. Now, knowing Gmail, because it's browser-based, has a few, the menu structure is a little less kind of organized than a regular application like an Excel or Word, where you've got the drop-down menus and you can always see the keyboard shortcuts handy to you. So what they've done once you've enabled keyboard shortcuts is you can just hit the shift key and question mark and look what pops up all of the different keyboard shortcuts that are built in to Gmail. Now you will do this on a regular basis because this is how you're gonna learn how to access all of the different shortcuts. And you just scroll through and read. Now I'm not gonna take you through each and every one of these shortcuts because that would make this an incredibly long and superfluous video. But instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple of them and then we're gonna go on to just why this is so important. So. For example, people always need to jump in to check their contacts, to find an email address, etc. So you can go, now you have to, instead of you can go under the app menu where they've moved it to and you can click on contacts, but instead of doing that, you can hit GC. Just hitting the G and then the C key pops open Google contacts. Now if this doesn't work for you, one of two things is happening. The first thing that's happening is you aren't in your inbox. You are in, say, a compose window within Gmail, so the same keyboard shortcuts don't work because they're, they're dependent on which window you are in. Or you've not turned it on. You haven't turned it on in the gear settings. And you go back in, turn it on, save it, and it will work. It's very cool. Now, how I kind of like the fact that Google has incorporated this GC or G. Uh, for example, if I want to go into my drafts, I can go under here, under the different menus here to click on my drafts folder, again, reaching for my mouse, or go G, D, it always makes sense, and that'll bring you into your draft folder. This is, it's kind of like the G, the G symbol when you're in your inbox, is sort of like asking Google, the Google Assistant with the Google Home. Uh, G lets Google know that you want to do something, and then the next letter follows with what you want to do. So once again, you can go into the keyboard shortcuts, you can read through and you can see just how many shortcuts there are. Now, if you learn to use all of these tools, just how much time will you save if you learn to stay on the keyboard? Well, look at this. There's one article that I found, and now I will link to this article down below, uh, these articles, but this is from a company called Brainscape, and they claim that if people learn to use keyboard shortcuts on all apps, and they say you save about two seconds every time you use a keyboard shortcut instead of going to the menu. And I dare say that's when you know where the menu is. It might even be longer than two seconds to go over and, and, and make a click. But they say you can save up to eight days of productivity 
per year. Eight full days of getting more done. And they've got a calculation here that they work through that proves it. Well, I can one up that. I'll also link to this in the comments below. But these people at ShiftArt created a calculator. Now they created the calculator uh, ostensibly for people that are using Photoshop, but it works for everything as far as I'm concerned. You can go in here and you can decide how long it takes you to find a menu item. Say it's two seconds, we'll leave it at two seconds. The average number of keyboard shortcuts that you use per minute when you're working, and I'm just putting mine at one minute. If you're doing something like, uh, if you're using Photoshop or you're doing an app like that, you will be using more than one keyboard shortcut per minute, but let's just say one. And then they calculate how much that works out to in seconds and the number of minutes per session. So let's say that um, they say Photoshop, but let's say you just work on kind of knowledge work four hours a day, doing emails, writing reports, doing that sort of stuff. Stuff where you'll be using different keyboard short or different uh, menu commands on a fairly regular basis. So it, based on four hours of working per day, uh, five days per week, then they say that you will actually save 34 hours per year just based on that criteria. And if we, in, and you can play with this calculator. If you say, you know what, I work five hours a day on average. If you increase it to five hours a day, there you, you hit the week. You hit 42 hours of productivity saved per week. That is why it's worth learning to use these shortcuts. Those little two second snippets, they add up and they add up big time over the course of a full year. Now, what's the quickest and easiest way to learn to use these shortcuts? Well, I think just by using this, this win window here, learning to hit the shift question mark whenever you are about to look for a menu and then taking the time to look for what the keyboard shortcut is and then using that shortcut. It'll be a process that over weeks and probably months, you will train yourself on the apps that you use most often. Obviously in Gmail, you use this, uh, the key this keyboard shortcut window. But in other apps, when you're using them, if you take a look and you pay attention to what the keyboard shortcuts are in the menu, if you make that a habit to do that, you can indeed save yourself at least a week of productivity per year, maybe more. I love this concept. I'm committed to doing it. I hope you are as well. I love reading your comments and suggestions, so please post below. I do read every single one. If you like this video, please give it a like and share it with your friends or colleagues who may find it useful. Now make sure you've subscribed and hit that notification bell. And if you have time, check out some of our other videos right over there. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.